once again i am here with a new video for you all and uh, the topic of this video is related to the minerals conventional sources and non conventional sources of energy in this video especially we are going to discuss about just one part of that which is conventional sources of energy now before i proceed with this video i want to request you all please share the link of this video with your friends and classmates so that all can take the benefit of this video and don't forget to subscribe the channel and as you subscribe the channel also please press the bell icon so that you will get further notifications whenever any new video is uploaded in the channel you will get the information about it so let's start with the topic conventional sources of energy now first of all i want to ask whether uh, the conventional sources you know the meaning of conventional sources or not before we start with this discussion of uh, various sources we should know that what is the actual meaning of conventional sources so what does that mean you know all uh, there are different sources of energy right different sources of energy are there but just a few sources are such which have been in use since long time or the other way we can say that all the sources of energy that are used by human being for a long time and are still in use is are still being um, used abundantly all such sources of energy are called as conventional sources of energy this type of energy include coal petroleum natural gas and hydroelectricity out of all these if you see coal petroleum and natural gas all these are the fossil fuels but if we take the hydroelectricity hydroelectricity is actually a renewable source of energy besides the hydroelectricity rest all other sources are non renewable these are exhaustible so these are a few points related to the conventional sources of energy now first of all when we talk about this type of energy sources we should know about the various disadvantages of these energy sources what are the main disadvantages number one is that almost in all these these disadvantages are same number one is that coal in coal you will find it is coal petroleum natural gas whatever any of these sources of energy you can take these all are non renewable sources these are minerals and minerals we have seen that minerals are totally non renewable one thing next is they cause a lot of pollution right they release several greenhouse gases they release ash smoke all these things and several other gases are released by burning of coal petroleum or even natural gas also some residues are left so uh, these are basically causing a lot of pollution and along with that global warming also because many greenhouse gases are released when we burn the coal and all coal petroleum and all so uh, the greenhouse gases ultimately cause the global warming so ultimately all these are uh, causing a lot of harm also on the uh, one side right moreover you can say these are very costly these are uh, more costlier than the uh, other means of uh, you can say other sources of energy so under this category you will see coal petroleum natural gas and hydroelectricity now let's start with the first one that is coal coal basically is a, a combustible solid uh, it is actually found in it is a stratified rock of organic and mineral matter and it is generally um, found in large quantities at several places 
especially when we talk about the composition of it it is mainly composed of carbon and that also depends when we find a very good quality coal the carbon content is very high in that okay it reaches to 90% or more than that like anthracite coal and all but when we talk about the other uh, types of coal you will find that the carbon content becomes less in that so the range almost from 60 to 90% uh, percent of carbon content is found in the coal besides this hydrogen 1 to 12 percent again it keeps varying oxygen 2 to 20 percent again this also keeps varying and as well as in the nitrogen also you'll find similar condition as there their amount keeps on varying and also small amounts of phosphorus and sulfur is found in it now come to the formation of coal now basically how the coal is formed have you ever thought of it how ultimately the coal has been formed we all know we all have heard about the uh, that the coal is formed by wood by but how come a wood can get converted into coal right this is something you should think over it now for that when we did a lot of studies over this main thing is that formation of coal here we are talking about the the process right how the coal is formed you can see here step by step it's mentioned here and side by side you can see in the picture also it's given it occurs in first of all sedimentary rock okay in association with carbonaceous shells right carbonaceous shale and sandstone fine clay all these are found along with the the coal second very important point is that it is formed due to the accumulation of vegetable matter number 2 is it is formed due to the accumulation of vegetation matter in swampy areas or broad deltas coastal plains basin basin lowlands there it is formed now when this vegetative matter is subjected to geological processes since long time there have been several geological changes happening here so when it is subjected to geological processes that result that have uh, actually resulted in physical and chemical changes so that ultimately gives rise to makes the mass of vegetative matter it was probably which uh, changed into coal uh, due to heat and pressure so when it undergoes through a geological process long geological process of uh, and the pressure is exerted from upside that that is the time when this vegetative matter changes into coal and what is the main factor under extreme heat and pressure under extreme heat and pressure which is generated by the increasing weight of the overlying layers okay overlying sediments or overlying uh, water bodies so this is how the coal uh, starts uh, actually uh, the formation of coal starts now you can see here with time what is the duration required for this the different type of coals are shown here in this picture and from above the heat and pressure is applied now come to the next one uh, what are the different varieties of coal what are the different types we we can see in india at least in general in uh, the entire world you will find basically the most important three types we can find that is the anthracite bituminous and lignite how we can say that these different uh, types of coal belong to any particular grade suppose anthracite when we say it is the best quality how do we know that it is of best quality number 2 is bituminous how we know that it is after anthracite so depending on the amount of carbon moisture volatile matter and uh, and you can say the calorific value the coal can be classified into uh, three major categories number 1 is anthracite number 2 is bituminous number 3 is lignite uh, one more type is there generally we we uh, study about it but it is not exactly it cannot be called as a coal it is still in the formation of the making of coal so that is actually um, called as peat p e a t now 
as we start with the uh, the different uh, types of coal number 1 number 1 the first type of coal is anthracite it is the best quality coal okay best quality coal number 2 it is actually a uh, hardest right very hard and uh, tough moreover it is highly ranked means it is one of the best quality one uh, of the best quality coal present in the world but again one point i must tell you here that we have seen in the case of uh, minerals whenever any mineral is um, of very good quality that will be available in very less quantity and if any a uh, mineral is present in less quantity now second type of coal uh, we have is the bituminous coal now this is actually again this is a second grade coal if quality wise we say and one more thing is there this is a this is a coal which is very hard it is it has not got the shine it is not so lustrous like the um, anthracite coal anthracite coal is more lustrous it has got shine in this but in in the bituminous coal you will find it is hard black and it is compact but the shine is not there and it has actually uh, you can say the uh, 50 to 80% of the carbon content is there in it and besides that on uh, um, overall if we say the use of bituminous coal is maximum in the world and uh, whether it is industries or it is the um, iron and steel industries or we can say as a cooking coal generally we use there in the thermal power plants we use coal on large scale then in households also wherever it is used in whatever amount basically the bituminous coal is in maximum demand one reason is there behind it because its carbon content is not so low almost it is see uh, bituminous when we say it has got a range between 50 to 80% of carbon content okay so it can be uh, somewhere we may get the bituminous coal which has got around 80% of the carbon content but in some other cases we uh, may get any other bituminous coal which has got low content of carbon so accordingly it is used for different purposes but one more thing it is easily available maximum area if you see in india bituminous coal is available right reserves of bituminous coal are maximum as compared to the anthracite coal so keeping that quality also in mind if we take it in this way it is easily available and it is uh, uh, it is more cheaper than anthracite coal and this makes it more in demand besides this you can say in actually it is it is uh, as a steam coal with a carbon content of 80% in it right is considered as the best quality of best quality of bituminous coal and in certain cases we uh, we find that in the houses actually these days the use of the use of coal has become less in the houses earlier it was in very much use but still in several areas you will find the coal is used in several houses for different purposes so that is actually called as household coal right and it is black and lustrous but uh, its carbon content is a compare uh, little less than the steam coal and the third uh, coal which we generally um, take it under the bituminous coal is a coking coal okay this is a high grade bituminous coal again when it is heated in coke ovens it fuses with coke an important ingredient in the iron and steel industry and that's why this is in great demand in uh, that industry also so you can say that bituminous coal is uh, in maximum demand overall we see uh, find so it is it is basically used in thermal power plants it is you can see here how the coal is actually used at several levels it is uh extracted and then it passes through different uh, stages now the next uh, type of coal is lignite 
Lignite coal is considered as the third grade coal and it, it has got because of its uh, low content of carbon, it has got high moisture content. Moreover, it releases a lot of smoke and uh, when it gets burnt, after that it leaves some ash also behind it. So these are a few parameters on the basis of which we uh, categorize coal according to uh, these parameters that what quality it is what grade it is so it is a lower grade coal and it is generally uh, when you will find it is brownish color dark brown color uh, is there of this coal and it is almost the carbon content is around 40 percent or so and it uh, because it has got a lot of moisture with it so it uh, this is one of the reasons why it releases a lot of smoke when it is burnt clear then one more thing is there it is uh, basically the area where uh, we can find lignite in india is uh, one major region is there for this that is in tamil nadu and uh, the mine is actually situated at naiveli okay naiveli in tamil nadu that is the most important mine for lignite now the fourth type actually this is uh, uh, many times we consider this as a type of coal itself but in actual it is not a coal right it is still in the process of formation of coal so you can say the other way that it is the first stage in the transformation of wood to coal clear it has still not got converted totally into coal now it has the least carbon content and is the most inferior type as uh, compared to lignite also it is the most inferior type and um, it is an accumulation of you can say the vegetal uh, vegetative matter which has undergone varying uh, degrees of decomposition and carbon carbonization right so when it undergoes through that process it results into the peat and when it continues for a long time the same way that results into different categories of coal then lignite then bituminous and then the best quality is uh, anthracite okay so this is actually the beginning of the formation of coal you can say the transformation this is called peat when we talk about the distribution of coal in india india ranks third first of all in the world right overall in the world production you will find the India our uh, country is lying at the third position after China and USA. And uh, one more very important thing to be noted down here: the oldest coal field in India is Rani Ganj. Rani Ganj, it is in West Bengal, and the largest coal field is Jharia. Jharia in Jharkhand. Now the two geological ages. In India, if we see the coal occurs in rock deposits mainly which belong to the two geological ages when these have been formed and these are namely Gondwana and Tertiary and when we talk about this Gondwana, Gondwana is actually uh, the coal which is belonging to 200 million years ago. So it is uh, uh, 200 million years or more than that. That is the period when it has been formed and that is called Gondwana. And the other one is tertiary. Tertiary deposit is actually that which has been, which is uh, actually uh, by various studies it has been found that it is around uh, 55 million years of, um, you can say years back, uh, these deposits have been found. And tertiary deposits are actually 55 millions, million years ago. These have been formed. Now, India does not have extensive deposits of anthracite coal, uh, which we discussed just now in the earlier part, the best quality coal. And uh, uh, the coal of Gondwana fields, basically, you know, uh, we discussed just now, the I was telling you about the Gondwana and tertiary. In India, the Gondwana fields have got a maximum bituminous quality. Right? So, uh, uh, even anthracite coal also is present in very limited amount so basically maximum area which is covered by Gondwana fields is having the uh, bituminous coal Gondwana coal fields actually it accounts for almost 98% of the total reserves what we find in India 
ओके टोटल कोल रिजर्व इफ वी टेक हंड्रेड परसेंट आउट ऑफ दैट नाइन्टी एट परसेंट ऑलमोस्ट नाइन्टी फाइव टू नाइन्टी एट परसेंट ऑलमोस्ट बिलोंग्स टू दिस कैटेगरी दैट इज द गुनवाना कोल फील्ड्स एंड गुनवाना कोल इज ऑलमोस्ट फ्री फ्रॉम मॉइस्चर एंड इट कंटेन सल्फर एंड फॉस्फोरस ऑल्सो इन स्मॉल क्वान्टिटीज सो दैट मेक्स इट अ बेटर कोल then important coal bearing formations are collectively known as damodars that is again one term which is generally asked many times what is meant by damodars damodars are actually the important coal bearing formations and where they where uh, collectively these are found that is called damodars and they belong to the lower gondwana system clear now gondwana coals are basically if you uh, see in the entire uh, coal reserves of india you will find these are confined to the river valleys of damodar mahanadi godavari right these these are the areas you will find the gondwana coal reserves are coal fields are there and the major reserves of gondwana coal is found in the indian states of uh, accordingly you can say west bengal jharkhand odisha etc and which actually produces maximum uh, of uh, the uh, the coal that is 4 fifths of the total india's coal reserves are present in this region only 4 fifths of the total reserve next is tertiary coal fields now tertiary coal fields of india uh, possess actually a higher moisture content right as compared to the gondwana coal field you will find the coal which is available here in the tertiary one you will find more moisture content is there more sulfur and uh, marine sediments are there so what is it that degrades the quality of it that makes it of lower quality okay and that's why it is it is uh, less used also clear and it is found in the states of assam arunachal that means in the northeastern states especially and extreme southern parts right northeastern states of assam arunachal pradesh uh, meghalaya nagaland and in south if you talk about the lignite coal reserve okay which is the uh, which is i told you in the beginning uh, that it is available in tamil nadu uh, naivali coal reserve is there related to the lignite so the naivali lignite field in tamil nadu is the largest lignite deposit field in south india so these are about the uh, various geological ages when these were formed these are called by that name now the advantages of coal advantages of coal if you see as compared to the uh, the other fuels what we use coal is used as a source of power for running machines trains ships dynamos right then it is used in manufacturing of iron and steel also in large quantity it is being used then it is used as a direct source of heat and energy for domestic purposes various domestic purposes it is used right in the potteries and for building materials like cement burning of bricks okay in the brick kilns it is used on large scale then tiles then in iron and brass foundries also it is used right then a variety of chemicals also such as ammonia benzol etc are obtained as by products from the gases which are given off when coal is burnt okay so in a closed chamber to get the hard coke or the metallurgical coke out of it so one side we get the coke out of it the other side the gas which is released it provides us ammonia benzol etc now next is the disadvantages of coal what are the basic disadvantages of it so under that we can say calorific value of coal especially if you remember we have discussed about it in the beginning that in india maximum coal which is present that coal is actually belonging to the low grade or the you can say bituminous or lignite right so that's why it, it we can say that calorific value of the coal especially which is found in india is very low right then coal reserves are also not at one place available these are scattered here and there so again that is one of the big disadvantage right then next is cost of production and transportation especially transportation because it is a bulky uh, material okay it has got a lot of weight 
सो वेन वी ट्रांसपोर्ट एनी बल्की मटीरियल इट चार्जेज मोर इन दैट वे राइट सो इट इंक्रीजेज द कॉस्ट ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इन दैट वे नेक्स्ट इज देर आर लिमिटेड रिजर्व ऑफ कोल इफ यू से इन इंडिया especially certain regions are having some reserves of coal otherwise total reserves if we say there are very limited reserves of coal available in india okay then next is when the coal is burned that is again one very important uh, disadvantage of coal when it is burned it releases a lot of pollution and especially at the site of uh, mining also it is uh, causing a lot of pollution so basically the pollution part is very very important disadvantage of coal because when we burn it so the, it releases several gases out of it and out of that some of the greenhouse gases are released and these greenhouse gases ultimately cause the pollution on one side as well as that causes the global warming okay so these are about uh, these are uh, the disadvantages of coal now this is all about the coal that is one of the conventional sources of energy now in the next video we are going to discuss about the petroleum okay so till then bye